from my living room to yours in this time of self-isolation. Uh, I hope you're doing well. I hope you're staying safe. Um, and I hope you're keeping up your practice because in stressful times especially, it's, um, it's a good thing to recommit over and over um, to our practice. Uh, we tend, especially those of us who are empathic, to absorb some of the energies around us. Uh, whether that's people you're living with or just kind of the general vibe of um, the nation and the world at the moment. And um, it's maybe uh, too easy of a tendency for some of us to allow uh, some of those incoming energies to just get layered on top of our own. And since we're all in sort of a baseline state of anxiety, I think, right now with the epidemic going on, um, it's that much more important to just come back to your mat come back to your presence, come back to your uh, still center of your being. To the extent that we're able to come back to ourselves and to increase our own um, awareness and presence in the moment, we can then help transmit that energy outward uh, to the rest of the world. And so in that way, we do humanity a service by simply being part of it and taking care of our own little corner of reality and to help raise the overall vibration. And we're going to focus on uh, the spine and the hips because I think if um, we're stuck in the house and maybe we're spending more time on the couch than we're used to, those are sort of the first places we'll start to notice a loss of mobility from our inactivity. Um, so if you've got black blocks handy, have those. Um, I've got a bolster here as well. Um, I'll try to make these things as optional as possible. So if those aren't available to you, then you can work around them. I also have a strap here for some back bending that we'll do later. Uh, you could also use a belt or maybe a long strip of cloth or something else that happens to be handy in your environment. So let's begin. And we'll start in a comfortable seated position, whatever that means for you. As long as you can sit with your spine tall, feel a little lift up through the crown of the head, and allow your chin to uh, tilt down slightly and feel the lengthening in the back of the neck as you do so. Feel your heart rise. Take a moment to set your intention for practice today, whatever that means for you. Begin to allow that stress and heaviness and fear, any other noise that's cluttering up your mental space, allow those things to begin to just drift away. So you can refocus in this moment, refocus in the body. And you do that over and over again in the course of our practice, always coming back to center and coming back to the breath, which we notice is moving gently, automatically, in and out of our being. Place your right hand on your belly. Just notice that inflation and deflation and just gently inhale and exhale, just breathing normally to start. Just make the breath be calm. And send a deep inhale into the low belly, really fill it up. Hold at the top for a moment. And on the exhale, empty it all out. Really vacuum out the low belly here. Second deep inhale. Hold. And exhale, release. Third inhale, fourth, and ohm all together. Inhaling, drop the belly down, tip the tail up, reach long through the crown of the head, 
And then on your exhale, curl under, press the back of the heart up as you vacuum out the belly and let the chin tuck in at the end. And then continue. We'll flow through our cat cows gently. Beginning to wake up the spine. Especially if we've been, as I said, spending time maybe binging on Netflix or playing video games or whatever you're doing to keep busy. As we're all spending most of our time indoors right now. You might have spent some time being hunched over. So really feel the back bend as you drop the belly down. And really lengthen up through the crown of the head. And letting that motion ripple from the tailbone all the way up. And then we'll add in some jump ropes. Connecting with the breath, so we're dropping the belly as we inhale. And then rotating through the cat back on the exhale. And then as always, engaging your ujjayi breath. So that we have to manage that breath and that movement of energy in and out of the body. And of course, regulating the nervous system at the same time. And let's press our hips back toward the heels a couple of times. If your wrists are okay with this, you can rock out over the wrist, front to back. And then we'll meet back up in the center with a neutral spine. On an inhale, lift your right leg away from the center line. Keep the knee bent. And then make some circles with that knee. We need to open up the hip socket here. As we know, the hips like to hold a lot of tension, emotion, residue of old traumas. Maybe you've got some um, sort of toxic energies built up in there from just what's been going on in the world. We'll reverse that motion. Make your circles in the opposite direction. And then add in some tiger kicks. As you drop the belly down, kicking the heel up behind you. And then on an exhale, draw that knee forward toward the nose of the forehead. Inhale, kick. Exhale, knee to the nose. And you can kind of mix it up here too. Do some circles with the knees. And then we'll get your tiger kick. Getting nice and juicy in that hip socket. Now that's all knee and tiger kick. Keep that heel way up behind you. Stay tall on the shoulders here. Exhale, draw the knee toward the nose and then swing that foot all the way through and place it between the hands. Grab your blocks if you've got them in your body. You could do this with the hands too if the floor is close enough for you. Box can be kind of handy for this one. And then inhale, we sink forward. Open the heart up toward the sky. On the exhale, press the hips back. Flex the front foot as you come into half on the mouse and a half splits. And then continue. We'll flow back and forth. Inhale forward and open. Retract your shoulder blades. Exhale, press the hips back. Using your joy to stay connected. There's a little trick. As long as you're thinking about matching the breath to the motion, that gives your brain something to do, something to focus on, so that we're not getting caught up in any of the noise that can sometimes go on in the mind. When the mind gets a little busy, wants to be distracted from what's actually happening, keeps us in the moment. Next time we come forward, we're going to sink into this low lunge. And really lower the shoulders away from the ears, retract the shoulder blades. And then you're going to take one of your blocks, or you could go without a block if your fingertips reach the floor here, and set it outside the left hip. And on an inhale, reach up and over with the other arm, reach along for the fingertips. I'm going to rotate this top shoulder back a little bit to keep the heart open. Give you a nice side rib stretch here. And then sinking into that lunge. Again, some of you might be able to come all the way down at the fingertips or maybe even hand flat on the floor. And find your breath here. Inhale. Exhale, reach. Inhale, 
back up, and then frame the forward foot, and step back to down dog. Coming into down dog, we reach the chest toward the upper thighs, and pedal out the heels one at a time as you let the tail wag side to side a bit to open up the hips here. Now notice that down dog actually includes a back bend here. So as we're reaching the chest toward the upper thighs, and you can bend the knees a lot here if you'd like, we're actually introducing a little bit of a gentle back bend. So see if you can feel that in the back. The tailbone is always pressing up toward the sky. We've got our index fingers parallel as far as our hand alignment. And if you can separate a little bit here. And then we're going to release forward and just drop the knees down to the mat. Moving in on the other side. So left leg now, we keep the knee bent as we raise it away from the center line. And then make some nice circles there with the knee. You can start out small and then get a little bit bigger over time. Reverse that motion and then go front to back. Whatever was the opposite of what you were just doing. And then a few tighter kicks. Kick up behind, so the knees reach to the nose. And keeping these motions nice and smooth, right? So we're not going to jerk around too much. There's a tendency, I think, well, just speaking for myself, but sometimes you want to get a little deeper into something you want to really throw the body around. So we don't need to do that. It's more important to maintain control over your motion and have that motion be, you know, kind of elegant, kind of graceful. Demonstrating some reverence for your practice, because this is important work that we're doing here. So it's not just about physical fiction, fitness. It's not just about creating a beautiful body, although that's a really nice side effect. It's about so much more than that. Let's meet up in a tiger kick. Really press up with that heel. Let the front of the body open. On an exhale, draw the knee through toward the nose, and then swing the foot all the way through as well. Coming into your low lunge again, with or without the blocks, and then we'll inhale as we sink forward into this low lunge. Opening the heart, retract the shoulder blades toward the center spine. Lifting up through the sternum like someone's got a string attached there. And then on the next exhale, press the hips back. Flex your front foot, front ankle flexed, coming into half splits. And then we'll continue front to back. You can always adjust the distance between the front heel and the knee of the back leg. So sometimes if this pose feels a little awkward, it's simply because the distance between the two is a little off. So we don't have the hips coming all the way back down onto the heel, but just far enough that you can feel a nice stretch in the hamstring bones, pressing back gesture that we're taking. One more, and then next time we come forward, let's hold forward and take our block to the outside of the right hip this time, and then inhale and reach it up and over with the left arm, reach along through those fingertips, and then this top shoulder rotates back a little bit. Gaze can be up at the ceiling or down at your supporting hand. Then again, maybe the hand comes all the way down toward the floor here. Nice sideward stretch. Find your breath. One more inhale. Exhale, reach long. Inhale, come up. We'll frame the front foot and step back again. Leg again. Pedal it out and down, dog, and wag the tail. And again, feeling a little bit of a back bend here, reaching the chest toward the upper thigh. Let the head hang heavy. Gravity drawing down on the crown of the head. Get a nice flexion in the shoulders here, too, so letting the nose warm up. And then we'll release that action with the heels and inhale up with the right leg. We'll allow that knee to bend. And then begin to stack the hips as they open toward the long edge of the mat. So the heels dropping toward the opposite glute. That knee is lifting up toward the ceiling. 
And we're keeping our shoulders parallel to the front, top edge of the mat. And then inhale, re-level the hips, extend that knee, exhale and draw the knee all the way forward. Knit the foot between the hands, and we're going to rise up to high lunge. Holding our high lunge here. Shoulders are relaxed. Extending through the back heel, straightening that back knee. And then let's interlace the fingers. Invert the palms so they face up toward the ceiling. On an inhale, drop the back knee almost down to the mat. Don't quite touch it. Exhale, extend both knees and then come all the way up. Again, inhale, drop the back knee down. Exhale, extend. Inhale, dip. Exhale. Keep the core engaged. Hands could always come to prayer at the heart if this is a lot for the shoulders. One more. And we're going to hover with the knee here. A little bit longer. Exhale, straighten it back up. And then bring the hands to the heart. Bend just the front knee this time. And then twist and dive the elbow outside the front knee. So coming into prayer twisting lunge, we're twisting toward that front knee, reaching out through the back heel. Option here, open your hands wide if that's part of your practice. Long line of energy from the heel to the crown of the head. And the next inhale, we'll reach your twist, sweep the hands high. Exhale, hands to the heart, hands to the floor, and step back to down dog again. And let it go for a moment, down dog. Down dog is actually a resting pose. <laughs> if you're new to yoga, you'll appreciate that over time. I know in the beginning it doesn't really feel that way. But we can release the hips again here and let the head hang down. And then inhale up with the left leg. Allow that knee to bend, so the heel drops toward the opposite glute. And then we're opening up the hips toward the long edge of the mat, keeping the shoulders parallel with the top edge. Head hangs down. The supporting heel is reaching toward the mat. You may or may not reach it, and that's okay. It's come over time. And spaciousness in that left hip. On the next inhale, re-level the hips. Extend that knee, and then exhale, draw the knee forward, plant the foot between the hands. Stay up on the toes of the back foot, whoops, and then we inhale up to high lunge. So first finding our high lunge, reaching back through the heel, extending that back knee, shoulders are relaxed, heart is open. Find your steadiness here. And we're going to interlace the fingers and invert the palms so they face up. Inhale and dip the back knee down toward the mat. On the exhale, extend both knees and come all the way up. And you sort of a pyramid stance. Inhale, dip. Just hover that back knee, exhale up. Inhale, dip. Exhale, extend. A few more. Let's do three more. And on this last one, we're going to hover a little bit longer now. So the knee is hovering just an inch or two above the mat. Find your strength here. And then exhale, press all the way back up. And you're going to take the hands to the heart, bend just the front knee, come forward into a lunge, and then twist toward the front knee. Elbow comes outside. So right elbow outside the left knee. And then reaching back through the heel, forward through the crown. Feel that axis of energy through the body. So even though we're not actually moving as we're holding these asanas, we're feeling a sense of motion 
and our attention. So the attention is, of course, to reach forward through the crown of the head. So almost like this forward driving sensation. So you're standing still. On an inhale, release the twist, sweep the arms high. Exhale, dive down. Bring the forward foot straight back to down dog. And again, pedal out the heels. Feel that nice extension in the spine. A little bit of the back bend here. And we're going to drop the knees to the mat. We're going to press the hips back toward the heels to come to the child's pose and flip your palms over. Offer it up. Whatever's coming up so far in class, let that be released. Let it be taken off your hands. And breathe deeply into the back side of the body. Coming back to the breath over and over. Re-establish your ujjayi. And then we'll turn the palms back over. Draw ourselves back up through all fours and come up to down dog. Pedal off the heels here. And then exhaling, look forward at the thumbs, bend the knees, and either walk or float the feet up to come into Uttanasana or float at the top of your mat. Bend the knees a lot here, grab your opposite elbows, and let the head hang heavy. You take a little sway side to side here if you like. And then we're going to release the elbows and begin to roll up very slowly to standing, one vertebrae at a time. Head will be the very last thing to come up. When you reach the top, head comes up, we roll the shoulders back, open the heart as you retract the shoulder blades and spin the hands wide. Palms come up and exhale. Hands to the heart. Let's work in a couple of sun salutations while we're here. Inhale, sweep the hands high. Exhaling, swan dive into your practice, come into forward fold. And then inhale, lift up halfway. Fingertips brush the floor, maybe the lower legs. But long spine, flat back. Exhaling, fold in, connect the hands, and step back to down. Inhale, forward to plank. On the next, I'll drop the knees. To the mat, press the hips back toward the heels, and look forward at your thumbs. Drop the elbows to the mat here. And now as you come through, keep the elbows really close to the torso, and you're going to flow the heart between the thumbs. It's a little bit tricky. Once you come through, you lift up. It's a baby cobra. Exhale, release. Tuck your toes, and then press the hips back toward the heels. Almost to toes pose, but then we extend the knees, and here we are back in down dog. Let's do that again. Inhale, forward to plank. Go a little faster this time. Exhale, drop the knees, press the hips back, look forward, drop your elbows. Inhale, flow the heart between the hands. You kind of press into the heels of the hands as you come through. Exhale, release, tuck the toes, press the hips back, extend. And then inhaling, bend the knees a lot, look forward at the thumbs, walk or float, to forward or fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in. Inhale it, bend the knees, sweep the arms, rise up to standing, palms meet. And on the exhale, let's dive right back in to forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold, plant the hands, step back to down dog. Inhale, forward to plank. And you can take knees, chest, chin again, or lower if you try to run away. You have the push up. Don't let the shoulders drop to the end. Inhale to up dog with the thighs raised away from the mat. Notice how this is also a back bend. Exhaling, draw the belly and press the hips up and back, down dog. And then inhale, bend the knees, look forward, walk and float, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, bend the knees, sweep the arms, rise up, palms meet. Then exhale, let's sit our hips into the katasana chair. So balance the weight in the feet. Feet can be separated a little bit here. Maybe just underneath the hips. We'll tuck under with the tailbone. Keep the heart open. Shoulders are relaxed. A 
And let's interlace the hands behind the low back. Interlace the fingers. And then exhale and fold all the way in to Uttanasana. And let the hands drop over the back of the head as we come into the chest expanding forward bend. Find your breath here. Notice where the weight is in your feet. We call that connection Padabanda. It's always advantageous to have the weight balanced evenly among all four corners of the feet. So front to back, side to side. Try to balance it in the middle. You want to feel the arches lifted away a little bit. And then we're going to release our mind. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold in, place the hands and step back. Stand up. Inhale, forward to plank. And go through your vinyasa. Exhale, as you lower. Inhale, up. Exhale, draw the little belly in, lift up and back. Down dog. Right, while we're in down dog, let's take a block in front of the right knee. Line it up just below the shoulder, right about there. We're going to bend our knees for bend knee down dog, and then flex the right ankle, cross it over the left knee. We're going to come forward and lower that right knee onto the block. Keep the toes of the foot tucked under as you set the foot down. And now we're set up with figure four legs in sort of a, um, like a tabletop position. So this is a variation on pigeon. We're going to get into the outside of the right hip here. You can walk that back and forth a little bit to help increase that external rotation. And um, on an inhale, drop the belly down, just like you're doing cow pose. Reach back with the right hip. Deep in that stretch, so you're feeling it all on the outside of the hip there. If you go a little deeper still, you can go ahead and lower one elbow and then the other down from that. So this is called Alternative Pigeon, invented by one of my teachers, Stephanie Adams, at Flow Yoga in the River. And it's a really nice way 